Hello, all you lovely people on YouTube right now. My name is Elon Osborne, and I like to talk about movies, audio, and music. And today, we're going to take a little trip, folks. We're going to go online, and we're going to go over the nine channel receivers that are available right now in 2022. Because you may have seen this video where I go over two versus four high channels, and honestly, four high channels is better because then you get some movement in the Atmos effects. And typically Atmos does matrix the best and performs the best when you have a cuboid or 3D rectangle that you're dealing with and not just two high channels. So now you might be thinking with holiday shopping season coming up very soon, you know what? This year I might spring for that nine channel receiver so I can have a proper Dolby Atmos setup whether that be 5.1.4 or 7.1.4, etc. So let's stop beating around the bush and let's hop online, shall we? As you can see, we are on crutchfield.com. I am not being paid by Crutchfield to do this. I just kind of like their search engine a little bit better and their sorting feature. So I just prefer this. So let's get into it. Let's search nine channel. Oh, receiver, it already knows. Nine channel receiver. Then I'm going to go over here, sorted by most relevant. Nope. I want price low to high. Okay. Well, obviously RCA patch cables, <laughs> that's different. So let's keep scrolling down. Aha. Onkyo TX NR 7100, $1,300. Just FYI, when I really started getting serious about this YouTube channel and home audio in general, that was back in September of 2020 when the COVID pandemic was still a major issue globally. But due to factory fires and supply chain issues and just inflation in general, the price of everything, and I mean everything, not just electronics or home theater or whatever, everything has gone up in price. So that's just something we're living with right now. So pretty much gone are the days of when you're actually going to buy a new nine channel receiver for less than a thousand dollars. It's just the world we live in right now, folks. Anywho, back to the TX NR7100, it is $1,300. Now, a very important thing to note is that this is a nine channel receiver, so you could power, let's say, the Klipsch 5.1.4 cinema system with this because it's got nine channels. But one thing to note is that right here, the pre-out section is the subwoofers only because Typically subwoofers have their own amps inside of their own cabinet. So it sends the LFE signal out to the subwoofer, but the actual subwoofer is what powers the subwoofer driver. So this is a nine channel receiver without a full set of pre-outs because all you have is these subwoofers, but it can handle up to two subwoofers. So that is a plus. Let's look at some of the spec highlights. 100 watts per channel into eight ohms with two channels driven. Some of you may already know this, but for those of you who are somewhat new to home theater, if you do see any power ratings on a receiver like that, unfortunately, it's always going to be two channels driven. So when it says 100 watts, two channels driven, that means when you're actually listening to a movie in complete surround sound, Dolby Atmos surround sound, all nine channels going at the same time, it's probably gonna be more like I don't know, 65, 75, maybe tops. So let's just keep that in mind when we're looking over all these specs. It supports Dolby Atmos and DTSX. It also supports IMAX enhanced audio. It is also THX certified. But again, since this one does not have a full set of pre-outs, the room for expansion down the road is not that great because there's no way to support external amps because maybe down the road you get some bigger, better speakers that can handle more power. So then you want to power those speakers with more power than the receiver can actually do on its own. So you want to get some external amps to power your more power hungry speakers, but we'll get to that in a little bit. So just a reminder with a receiver like this, that does not have a full set of pre-outs room for expansion is just not there. So you can probably get by with this one for a while, but if you want to get into external amps and bigger speakers, then you're probably going to need to get another receiver down the road. As you can see, this does support 8K 60 Hertz and 4K 120 Hertz for you avid gamers out there. HDCP 2.3, eARC, again, for you gamers out there, variable refresh rate, auto low latency mode, 
quick frame rate transport. So I would recommend this Onkyo TX NR7100 for those who are getting into nine channels for the first time. Maybe you've got a speaker system with smaller satellite speakers because this receiver will definitely be able to power those smaller speakers just fine. And like I said, it's THX certified, so that's pretty cool too. All right, now let's move on. Denon AVR-X3700H. This is one that I recommended many, many times for those of you wanting to get into nine channel receivers, but also to have the ability to have up to a 7.2.4 configuration down the road, because as we can see here, go into this, haha, -ha, right here, we can see that it does have a full set of preouts, front, center, subwoofers two, surround, surround back, height one, height two. So it can process a total of 11 channels. So it has nine amps inside the receiver itself, but if you use a two channel external amp, you can power either your rear heights or your front left and right for a total of 11 channels. So you can have a 7.2.4 configuration with seven ear level speakers and four height channels. Now, with that being said, this particular model, the X3700H did come out in 2020 and it did have HDMI 2.1 bugs. The chipsets that came out in 2020 and not just Denon, Marantz, Yamaha, they pretty much used the same HDMI 2.1 chipsets and they had issues. So I'm only going to guess that any X3700H or Marantz SR6015 that you can buy now will hopefully be updated with the HDMI 2.1 chip that does not have any bugs. <laughs> so I just wanted to give you that heads up because there were issues and I don't want you to get a receiver that's just got a bunch of bugs. So just be a little bit cautious when you're dealing with this particular model, because as you'll see in a few minutes, they have already updated it to the X3800H. But as we can see here, it's rated at 105 watts per channel into eight ohms. Again, two channels driven with that power rating. It sports Dolby Atmos and DTSX and IMAX enhanced. Odyssey Multi-Q XT32 room correction. Like the Onkyo, this also supports HDMI 2.1 and 8K 60 Hertz, 4K 120 Hertz, HDCP 2.3, variable refresh rate, auto low latency, quick frame transport. So this is nearly identical to the Onkyo TX NR7100, but as I said, the big difference is it's got a full set of preouts. So the ability to expand in the future is much better, especially since you can expand up to a 7.2.4 configuration, which is dope. Moving on, we got the Pioneer Elite VSX LX305 for $1,400. And if you weren't aware, Onkyo, Pioneer, and Integra receivers are all under the same umbrella. So the software interface and a lot of the hardware components are the same across those three brands. Once again, 100 watts per channel into eight ohms, two channels driven, supports Dolby Atmos and DTSX. One big feature that sets this one apart is that it has Direct Live room correction. And at the moment, I honestly think Direct Live is the best room correction on the market. It also has HDMI 2.1, supports 4K 120 and 8K 60 Hertz signals, HDCP 2.3. But one thing to note is that this does not have a full set of preouts. See, the pre-out section is the subwoofers and zone two, but that's it. So as far as being able to expand beyond nine channels, that's just a no-go with this one. So you kind of got to pick your battles. Do you want direct live room correction? Or do you maybe want to go with the Denon X3700H that allows you to expand in the future for roughly the same price as this Pioneer? Moving on, the Integra DRX 3.4. So just a reminder, Pioneer and Integra, they're all part of that same company. $1,500, 100 watts per channel and eight ohms, two channels driven. It supports Dolby Atmos and DTSX, IMAX enhanced and direct live room correction, HDCP 2.3, eARC, all the goodies for you gamers out there. But one big difference with this one, we've got 
a full set of pre-outs. Front, center, surround, height one, height two. And I don't know about you, but I just love the look of the rear of a receiver that is white like this. I don't know, it just, make, it just helps everything stand out a little bit more. It's easier to read, in my opinion. I just like the clean look when a receiver has a back that looks like this. Although one big thing to note is that this one is kind of unique because it has a full set of pre-outs, but as you can see here, it only supports up to 9.2 channel preamp outputs. So this is one of the few out there that has a full set of pre-outs, but doesn't actually support up to a 7.2.4 configuration. It can only do 5.2.4. This is probably one of the only receivers that has this feature, which is kind of strange to me. But again, it has direct live room correction, which is the best. And with the way your living room or listening space is set up, 5.2.4 might be the max you can do anyway. So this particular receiver would be able to maximize that space and maximize your expansion potential by being able to incorporate external amps if you want to, etc. So yeah, pretty unique. Oh yes, the Onkyo TX-RZ50. Just $100 more than the Integra. As we can see here, we've got a full set of pre-outs. 120 watts per channel into eight ohms, two channels driven, supports Dolby Atmos and DTSX, and IMAX enhanced and THX certified, and Dirac Live Room Correction. Supports 8K 60 Hertz, 4K 120 Hertz, HDCP 2.3, eARC, all the goodies for video gaming. And look at here, big difference between the Integra and the RZ50, 11.2 channel preamp outputs. So this one does support up to a 7.2.4 configuration. And the fact that it is in stock right now is amazing. Just in time for the holidays because it had been out of stock for months. So I bet some of you out there are stoked. All right, now we got the Denon AVR X3800H, the new model. As you can see, 9.4 channel home theater receiver because it can support up to four subwoofers. That is totally new with these new models coming from Denon and Marantz. So this is obviously the successor to the 3700H. Now it's called the 3800H, but just like the 3700H, the 3800H has a power rating of 105 watts per channel into eight ohms, two channels driven. It supports Dolby Atmos and TTSX, IMAX enhanced, Odyssey room correction. But look at this, RO3D. The 3700H did not support RO3D. You had to upgrade to the 4700H. But now RO3D is included in the features for the 3800H. Huh, isn't that something? So if you're one of those people that prefer RO3D upmixing, now you can get it in the lowest tier nine channel Denon receiver. But as we can see here, it's not exactly that cheap because it is the newer model. So it is $1,700. All the same goodies, HDMI 2.1, AK60, 4K120, HTCP 2.3, variable refresh rate, etc. And as you can see here, it has 11.4 channel preamp outputs because let's take a look at the back as if we zoom in here, Oh, wow. Yeah, so we got zone two pre-outs, full set of pre-outs here, front, center, surround, surround back, height one, height two, and one, two, three, four subwoofer outputs. Woo, pretty cool, folks. And I don't know if you've seen any videos from Technodad, for example, he unboxed the 3800H and the user interface uh, is now 1080p quality and it just looks a lot cleaner, more refined. So this is definitely quite the upgrade from the 3700H. Also, it should be noted, I don't know why Crutchfield doesn't have any love for the successor or the, the step above this Pioneer Elite VSX LX305. There is a VSX LX505 that is the same price as the Denon X3800H, $1,699 or $1,700 basically. So as we, get, as we see, 
Going over here, if we just search for it, you can see B&H Photo carries it, Amazon carries it, Walmart carries it. So we can take a look at this. As you can see, we've got the full set of pre-outs. Yeah, up to 120 watts per channel at eight ohms. Two channels driven, of course. 8K 60 hertz, 4K 120 hertz, HDMI 2.1. Direct Live Room Correction comes in the box. IMAX Enhanced, Enhanced Gaming Features, obviously Dolby Atmos and DTSX. So unlike the 305 that did not have a full set of pre-outs, the 505 does have a full set of pre-outs. So just wanted to let you know that that is available currently for a nine channel receiver option with a full set of pre-outs for future expansion and it's only $1,700. Denon AVR 4700H for $2,100. It is currently out of stock, at least on Crutchfield, but it is the 2020 model. So I'm guessing any of them that are sold now will have the updated non-buggy HDMI 2.1 chipset. And as we can see here, full set of pre-outs. But since it is the 4700H, it only supports up to two subwoofers. 125 watts per channel, two channels driven into eight ohms. Supports Dolby Atmos, DTS, RO3D, IMAX Enhanced, Odyssey Room Correction, and 11.2 channel preamp outputs for a total of 7.2.4 if you want a configuration that large. Marantz SR6015, which is a 2020 model and the equivalent to the Denon X3700H. But clearly it's a lot more than the X3700H because it is $2,200. Whoa. Like I said, people, everything is so much more expensive now than it used to be just a couple years ago. 110 watts per channel into eight ohms, two channels driven, Dolby Atmos, DTS-X, IMAX Enhance, Odyssey Room Correction, sports 8K 60 Hertz, 4K 120 Hertz, HGCP 2.3, variable refresh rate and all that, eARC, 11.2 channel preamp outputs, but as we can see here, two discrete line level subwoofer outputs for more precise multi subwoofer setups. So it's not just one mono subwoofer signal split into two, it is in fact two discrete line level subwoofer outputs, if you're into that sort of thing. Moving on, we have the Integra DRX 5.4, $2,200. So pretty much the exact same price as the Marantz SR6015. But this Integra has a little bit more power, 120 watts into eight ohms, two channels driven, supports Dolby Atmos and DTSX, IMAX enhanced, THX certified, and Dirac Live Room Correction. Oh boy, there it is. 8K 60 Hertz, 4K 120 Hertz, HDCP 2.3, eARC, optimized gaming features, and 11.2 channel preamp outputs. So it does support up to a 7.2.4 configuration with the help of external amps. That's one of the main reasons I wanted to do this video is because there are more options out there than you might think. It's not just Denon, not just Marantz, not just Onkyo. You've got some options that are in the same price range as those brands that just have better marketing. So that's why you know their names a lot better. Yamaha Avantage RX-A6A 2449. As we can see on the back, it has a full set of pre-outs. Front, surround, surround back, center. And for whatever reason, Yamaha likes to call their Atmos presence. Front presence, rear presence. So just be aware of that since it doesn't actually say height. The internal amps inside this one have a lot of power, folks. 150 watts into eight ohms, two channels driven. Sports Dolby Atmos, DTSX. Yamaha has their unique Cinema DSP and YPOW room correction. If you really love Yamaha's Music Cast feature, this supports that. If you have a lot of Music Cast speakers around your home, you can use this as your central hub to be able to control that with ease. 8K60, 4K120, HTCP 2.3. This does support variable refresh rate and auto low latency, but it doesn't have the quick transport frame rate. 
just be aware of that if, if that is concerning to your gaming needs. <laughs> eARC has 11.2 channel RCA preamp outputs. And now we have the updated 4800H from Denon, the other 9.4 channel receiver from them. As we can see on the back, full set of pre-outs, front, center, surround, surround back, height one, height two, and one, two, three, four subwoofers. And here's something special. Dirac Live. That's one thing I forgot to mention with the Denon X3800H and this 4800H is that they are Dirac Live ready. It actually doesn't support Dirac Live straight out of the box. You do have to get a separate license for Dirac Live, which adds a few hundred dollars more to the price tag. But if Dirac Live is your go-to, then it's probably gonna be worth it for you. So yes, not so cool that it's not built into the receiver immediately, but it is cool that it is now an option on Denon and Marantz receivers. 125 watts per channel into eight ohms, two channels driven, Dolby Atmos, DTSX, RO3D, IMAX enhanced. It still does have Odyssey Multi-Q XT32 room correction. That is what comes in the box. AK60, 4K120, HDCP 2.3, Dolby Vision, all that, and your optimized gaming features, of course. eARC, 11.4 channel preamp outputs. Pretty cool. And as you can see on this screen, the Denon AVR X4800H and the new Marantz Cinema 50 are the same price. Well, I mean, that says $24.99 and this says $2,500. They're the same. But this Marantz Cinema 50 is actually their lowest tier nine channel receiver. So even though it's the same price as the X4800H, the features actually coincide with the X3800H, since Denon and Marantz are under the same umbrella. But as we can see here, Full set of pre-outs, front, center, surround, surround back, height one, height two, and one, two, three, four subwoofer outputs. And Dirac Live, of course, which is also something you would have to buy in addition. 110 watts per channel into eight ohms, two channels driven. DTSX, Dolby Atmos, RO3D, IMAX Enhanced, Odyssey Room Correction in the box. 8K60, 4K120, HDCP 2.3, yep, yep, yep. 11.4 channel preamp outputs. And one of the reasons it costs a little bit more than the Denon equivalent is because it has this four discrete line level subwoofer outputs for more precise multi subwoofer setups. So if that's your jam, Marantz might be the way to go. NAD T778, $3,500. Woo, not cheap, my friends. This does have a full set of pre-outs, front, surround, surround back, subwoofer one, two, center, and your height channels down here. Interesting layout this has on the rear, definitely unique. 140 watts per channel and eight ohms, two channels driven, Dolby Atmos, DTSX. This one does have direct live in the box. It is not an added expense. One cool thing is this does have blue OS, if you have any blue sound wireless speakers, so they can be controlled by this NAD receiver. So it is definitely a receiver for those of you who are both movie watching buffs, TV watching buffs, and music listening buffs. It is definitely a hybrid receiver when it comes to that kind of. Although this one probably is in need of an upgrade sometime soon because it only supports HDCP 2.2 and HDMI 2.0 and not 8K 60 or 4K 120. So just something to think about there. So that's the bottom of that list, but let's go into a couple other ones that I wanna to touch on. I bet a lot of you who are thinking of getting a nine channel receiver are on the hunt for something that will eventually let you be able to have a configuration of up to 7.2.4. So with that being said, having the ability to support up to 11 channels like that, I'm gonna to touch on some kind of hybrid receivers that have internal amps, but also support up to a 7.2.4 configuration. So let's search Arca Arcam, Arkham, Arkham Asylum. 
So let's start with the Arkham AVR5. As you can see, it says this is a 7.2 channel home theater receiver. But as we can see on the back, it's got a lot of pre-outs. Front left, front right, surround, center, sub one, surround back, sub two, and heights. Wait a minute, that seems like it supports up to 7.2.4. Oh, yes, you are correct supports up to a 7.2.4 Dolby Atmos or DTSX setup with an additional four channel amplifier or two two channel power envelopes. So Arkham receivers, and also we're gonna touch on Anthem receivers. They're like this in between hybrid preamp slash receiver because it has internal amps, yes. But again, if we look on the back, it only has a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven internal amps. So it can support up to seven speakers, like say your bed layer or your ear level speakers. But then if you wanna go beyond that, you have to get external amps. But I've heard both Arkham and Anthem receivers are just in their own league when it comes to stereo imaging, when you're listening to music. Their proprietary room correction software is better than Odyssey. And what's really weird is that they just don't really advertise a lot. You don't see the name Arkham or Anthem a lot out there. But a lot of people might overlook Arkham and Anthem because, for example, like it said, it was a 7.2 channel receiver. But it can process a total of 11 channels so you can have your 7.2.4 configuration still. Cool. So if you can already support up to four or even more channels with external amps that you already have, then you might wanna look at more like this, like the hybrid preamp slash receiver like this. Because nowadays, $2,000 for a receiver that can get you that 7.2.4 configuration is actually not that much. <laughs> but the internal amps aren't the most powerful, 80 watts per channel into eight ohms, two channels driven, but it does support Dolby Atmos and DTSX and IMAX enhanced. It is Dirac Live ready, but it is not included. It is sold separately, as you can see here. Although this particular one does not support HDMI 2.1, it only supports HDMI 2.0B, HDCP 2.2, but probably for the majority of you out there, not supporting 8K is not going to be an issue anyway. Okay, moving on, Arkham AVR10. Again, this is technically a 7.2 channel receiver, but just like the AVR5, it still has all those good old preamp outputs. This is also 80 watts per channel, into eight ohms, two channels driven, if you're using the internal amps, but it also supports up to a 7.2.4 configuration. IMAX enhanced. This one does include Dirac Live in the box and supports HDMI 2.0B and HTCP 2.2, and it costs a whopping 2750. But there is an update to the Arkham AVR 10, and that is the Arkham AVR 11. But it obviously costs a lot more, $3,050. Well, a few hundred dollars more, not too much more. Pretty much the same features as the AVR 10, but it's now been updated to support HDMI 2.1, 8K 60, 4K 120, HTTP 2.3. So it's just the successor to the AVR 10. This one not only has Dirac Live built into it, but it also has optional Dirac Live base control, which is a, an additional expense, but supposedly not only Dirac Live room correction is the best room correction on the market today, but also Dirac Live base control is just a cut above the rest when it comes to really, really dialing in your subwoofers and just getting those time aligned and just sounding so nice together. It is definitely something you wanna get if you have two or more subwoofers. Okay, so that covers the Arkham options out there that'll give you 7.2.4. Obviously they have more expensive ones that can do up to 9.1.6, but that'll be another video. We're just sticking with 7.2.4 on this one. So moving on, let's go with Anthem. Thing about Anthem though is they are expensive. Their lowest tier 7.2 channel home theater receiver, $3,100. Wow. And this is an even more unique setup because it's got seven internal amps, five of which are rated at 140 watts per channel, 
two of which are rated at 60 watts per channel. Supports Dolby Atmos and DTSX, IMAX Enhanced, Arc Genesis Speaker Calibration System for room calibration. It does support HDMI 2.1, 8K 60, 4K 120, HDCP 2.3, eARC, and it does have 11.2 channel RCA preamp outputs. Just a very unique offering from Anthem, but it costs a lot of money. And there you have it. Thank you for joining me on this dive into nine channel receivers in 2022. Just wanted to let you know that there are more options than you probably knew about concerning getting to that pinnacle 7.2.4 configuration that you've always wanted, right? Let me know in the comments below if you want me to do a similar video about seven channel or five channel receivers out there right now in 2022. Otherwise, what are your thoughts about what I just showed you? Are you surprised at how expensive things are right now? I know everything is expensive right now, but that was going over a list of things that are brand new. So, so maybe now that you know the makes and models of certain nine channel receivers, maybe you can also search for them elsewhere, eBay, or maybe even local listings like on Craigslist, who knows? So I hope that helped you in some way. So happy shopping, happy researching, et cetera, et cetera. As always, please be kind to each other out there. Don't just watch TV and movies, experience them. And of course, always be listening. By the way, when I first started, by the way, when I first started getting serious about, uh, <laughs> hair, I feel it, where is it?